Alice is an old abandoned railroad bridge that runs over a highway and a river. The bridge was abandoned in 1983, and since then it has sat slowly decaying with new cracks continuing to form. The bridge has become a local attraction due to its views and its graffiti. Its name is a reference to the popular Disney film Alice in Wonderland. In the film, Alice follows a white rabbit down the rabbit hole to Wonderland, which the locals deem similar to the feeling one might get going down one of the bridge's manholes. Once in the manhole, the structure becomes a wonderland of graffiti, with locals often coming to the bridge to take selfies, see the views, or smoke and drink with their friends. To get to the bridge, one has to go through a side road, climb up the hill, walk the trail until you've arrived. On the bridge, it has great views of the gap and the highway. The bridge is consumed by graffiti as it has found itself as the main graffiti hub of the area, most of which are weirdly placed political statements or just telling you to jump. The bridge also holds an excess of trash, such as old beard cans, cigarettes, spray paint cans, and other stuff. Upon first glance, the bridge is just like any other, a place to walk over and look down on what's below. But as you walk, you'll notice the many manholes sporadically placed throughout. There have been many attempts by officials to cover these manholes, as they're a hazard to public safety. Just a few years ago, a woman fell down one and had to be rescued by the authorities. However dangerous, the people always seem to break through them. Upon going down the manholes, you enter a cavernous hall filled with trash. These are the main appeal to Alice, and the main attraction because it allows people to go inside the bridge and be right above the road or the water. Every manhole is accessible and leads you to within the bridge. Every manhole except one. Manhole number three above the third support structure's ladder has been broken. The hole is also piled to the top with debris. Many people walk past this manhole and don't think much of it, but below them sits a dark truth about the reality of the rush for industrialization and the pitfalls of capitalism. 1909. The bridge is under construction and being built by the Western Rail Company. The plans were that it was to become one of the first continuous poor bridges in the country, and also the biggest. A continuous pour or slip form bridge is a bridge that is constructed in one continuous concrete pour. To facilitate this, the company planned for years, spent millions of dollars, and built was essentially a mold for the bridge. The thing was a monster prior to its pour, with scaffolding sticking out scaling the whole way with cranes and contraptions ready to pour. The pour would be facilitated by pipes that ran the course of the bridge to ensure that it would be an even pour. In a continuous pour bridge, it is of utmost importance that the concrete be spread evenly throughout the whole structure so it can harden at the same time and minimize cracks. Everything had to be perfect, and if any mishaps occurred, that would result in starting the whole process over again, draining the 627 tons of concrete from the river and rebuilding all supporting structures. It was an all or nothing deal, cheaper to the alternative, which is the common method of section building, but with a lot more risk involved, which is the main reason we don't see continuous pour structures this size today. Samuel P. Dutton was one of the foremen for the project. The 39-year-old foreman grew up in Tennessee and traveled around for work. This was his second slip form build, with the first being a watchtower in the Carolinas. He was head of section 3 and in charge of making sure the workers evenly spread the cement around as it came in through the pipes. On the day of the pour, one can imagine how high tensions were. They had prepared for two years for this day, and they couldn't afford to fail. Around 6 a.m., the pouring began. The pour started without a hitch, and it was expected to last 12 hours. Around the fourth hour, disaster struck. Samuel was overseeing workers to make sure they kept the cement even during the pour, when the wood scaffolding he was standing on failed, and he tumbled into the cement. Yelling broke out, the workers had just witnessed their superior fall in, and they began to yell for help. Not much could be heard over the sound of the 11 cement pouring machines running at full capacity. Samuel was struggling to stay above the cement. Two workers ran to the head overseer to notify him to stop pouring because Samuel had just fallen in. To their shock, the overseer demanded that the pour continue because to stop would mean that they had just wasted the last two years along with millions of dollars. The workers were forced to continue due to their boss's orders and over fears of losing their job. They returned to their section and continued to level out the cement knowing that Samuel was likely alive underneath. Over the next eight hours, the pour continued, and by 5 p.m. it was complete. Everyone celebrated the completion, aside from the Section 3 workers, who had just slowly buried their foreman in cement. It is widely accepted that the foreman was standing on the east side of the bridge, closer to what now is the highway on the third column, given his need to be on a taller structure so he could watch over it during the pour. 
Today, the third support structure is shrouded in mystery. Above it sits a manhole, and below, the only broken ladder on the bridge. Under that is a hole that has been filled with scraps, beams, and anything they could find to fill it. It is accepted among locals that within that hole is the permanent resting place for Foreman Samuel P. Dutton. The bridge will continue to be a landmark for locals. There are even talks to refurbish it to build a new Amtrak line across the state, bringing Alice back to its old form. One can only hope more safety comes along with it.